Officials say there's now more water in Tulare Lake than in some of the state's reservoirs, but fears have eased of extreme flooding in surrounding communities. Lake Tulare, once a massive freshwater body situated to the west of the Mississippi River, vanished during the 20th century due to a combination of agricultural diversion and prolonged drought. However, in the year 2023, an unexpected turn of events took place when this long, dormant lake began to mysteriously rise and refill itself at an astonishing pace. As the waters filled the previously dry land, which had remained parched for nearly a century, an unforeseen and chilling revelation emerged from the lake's depths. Today, we explore the enigma surrounding the rapid resurgence of this historic lake and uncover the potentially unsettling secret it may hold. Let's begin. In recent times, California experienced a remarkable and much-needed period of exceptionally heavy rainfall. While this deluge brought relief to many, it also brought unforeseen challenges to the region. With the anticipation of rising water levels that accompany heavy rainfall, no one could have predicted the potential disasters that awaited. However, amid these challenges, there were silver linings. The heavy rainfall offered several advantages. One significant benefit was the replenishment of land that had been devastated by persistent droughts in this part of California. Additionally, the rainfall had a positive impact on drought-affected reservoirs, helping to restore them. Nevertheless, some of these reservoirs are now in a perilous situation. For the first time in a decade, they are nearing their capacity, posing a significant risk to surrounding communities. Among these reservoirs stands Tular Lake, a picturesque gem nestled in the San Joaquin Valley. Historically, Tular Lake held the distinction of being the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi River and the second largest in the United States by surface area. For millennia, from the Paleolithic era onwards, Tular Lake thrived as a uniquely fertile region, sustaining one of the most substantial populations of Native Americans north of Mexico. However, the lake lost its title and remained an arid expanse of land for years, until a strange twist of events occurred due to the recent flooding phenomenon. Witnessing the lake's resurgence after decades of aridity astonished many onlookers and residents, evoking memories of its former glory. Yet this awe quickly turned into horror as the lake swelled far beyond its capacities, now posing a serious threat to lives and property. You might wonder why the reappearance of a lake could be problematic, especially after enduring a series of droughts for so long. Experts are now describing the lake's reemergence as an unfolding natural disaster, a phenomenon that demands a deeper understanding. However, before delving into the details of Tulare's reemergence, it's crucial to grasp the historical context of Tulare Lake and the events that led to its disappearance in the past. Once upon a time, the basin cradling Tulare Lake was home to a remarkable and diverse ecosystem of wetlands. These unique habitats played a vital role in the lake's rich history. Despite its predominantly arid surroundings, the region acted as a natural floodplain, nourished by waters from various sources. The southern Sierra Nevada contributed its westward flow. The transverse ranges added their northward currents. And occasionally, small intermittent streams from the coast range in the east joined the water tapestry. In this shallow water system, an abundance of distinct fish and bird species thrived all uniquely adapted to the lake environment. However, the mid-1800s marked a transformative chapter when European settlers arrived, seeking fertile land for agriculture. Canals were dug and diversion structures were erected, altering the landscape into arable land. Gradually, Tulare Lake lost its connection to the sources that once sustained it, leading to a decline in its size. Within less than five decades of irrigation, the lake shrank and dried up for the first time in recorded history by the year 1899. The absence of the lake presented an opportunity for the settlers, who quickly claimed the newly available land for farming and took measures to control waterways and mitigate flooding risks. The once teeming lake bed was converted into agricultural land with the construction of levees and the establishment of reclamation districts during the 20th century. Historically, Tulare Lake held significance as a landlocked body of water without a natural outlet to the sea. Its waters instead replenished groundwater reserves and contributed moisture to its source in the southern Sierra Nevada. 
Geological evidence even suggests that it was a remnant of a much larger ancient lake that once spanned a substantial portion of California's Central Valley. Over time, seismic forces and erosion sculpted the California landscape, causing the lake to fluctuate between draining and refilling. During exceptionally wet seasons, it would intermittently reappear, earning it the moniker of the Ghost Lake among locals. As the years passed, California experienced an extraordinary series of atmospheric rivers, bringing copious rainfall throughout the winter and early spring. The result was the rapid re-emergence of Tulare Lake, once sprawling across approximately 512,000 acres, 800 square miles, the lake has now been reduced to about 111,000 acres, approximately 445 square kilometers, with a current depth of 5 to 7 feet, about 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Despite its diminished size, the rejuvenated lake now teems with fish and attracts a multitude of birds to its shores. For many, this resurgence was a cause for celebration, marked by a ceremonial event by tribal members. However, alongside the joyous return of the lake lies devastation for some local families. Corcoran, the largest city in close proximity to the lake, with a population of 22,000, was among the first to experience the impact of its re-emergence. A series of floods necessitated the closure of several routes, raising concerns about the resilience of smaller surrounding cities. The flooding reached such severity that two smaller communities, Allensworth and Opa, were placed under evacuation orders as they faced the threat of being engulfed by the surging waters. The floods have also compelled numerous dairies in the region to relocate their cattle to safer ground. Satellite images captured over the past weeks provide a visual testament to the re-emergence of Tulare Lake in California's San Joaquin Valley. These images reveal the sudden inundation of vast expanses of land that were previously dedicated to cultivating crops, including those that fill grocery shelves nationwide. The reformed lake stretches approximately 10 miles, about 16 kilometers, at its widest point, as depicted in the images provided by Planet Labs to NBC News. The flooding has had a profound impact on one of the world's most productive regions for crops such as almonds, tomatoes, and pistachios, as over a dozen atmospheric river storms battered California throughout the winter. Notably, the flooding has led to the damage of over 1,200 structures in Tulare County, situated about halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, and approximately 78 miles, about 125 kilometers, inland. Many thousands of animals have died, crops have been destroyed, jobs have been lost, and damaged homes have had to be evacuated. The flooding has also exposed the long-term effects of groundwater pumping, which over the previous 10 years has caused certain areas of the land to sink by as much as 15 feet, about 4.6 meters. This alteration of the historical lake's topography has made it more susceptible to flooding, the situation in California remains precarious, with the looming potential for further flooding and a consequent expansion of the lake's size. As summer unfolds and the temperature rises, the situation might worsen as the vast snowpack in the Sierra Nevada mountains builds and spills into the swollen rivers. Authorities are leaving no stone unturned to mitigate the emerging terror caused by the re-emergence of Tulare Lake. Meanwhile, Meteorologists have given a clear warning about the situation. Before delving into meteorological warnings, it's essential to note that California's state water engineers have undertaken numerous strategies to manage the rapid resurgence of Tulare Lake. Despite their efforts, the lake's expansion persists, establishing itself as a significant and enduring presence in the state's agricultural region. In response to the flooding, local individuals have stepped up to aid in mitigation efforts. Among them is airboat pilot Mr. Coughlin, usually stationed 230 miles away in the San Francisco Bay, who has been diligently removing sunken electrical transformers from the lake. The lake's remarkable resurgence has even prompted the Kings County Sheriff's Office to secure its own airboat, recognizing the need to adapt to the changing landscape. Sergeant Nate Ferrier of the Kings County Sheriff's Office was astonished by the lake's sheer size admitting that, like many others, he had not ventured far beyond the shoreline. 
While law enforcement urges the public to stay away from the lake and respect the do not enter warnings, some individuals have chosen to capture daring Tulare Lake selfies, wading into the toxic waters for adventure or capturing scenic sunset views. A few even attempted to drive across the lake, resulting in rescue missions when they found themselves submerged and swimming to safety. Not to be outdone, journalists have embarked on their own journey across the lake, setting off from Bakersfield to the San Francisco Bay. The Bay Center, fed by the Kern, Tulare, and Kings Rivers, retains approximately 2.5 million acre-feet of frozen snow water, gradually melting and contributing to the lake's expanding size. Consequently, the lake's dimensions will hinge on the rate of snowmelt and the capacity to divert water elsewhere. To manage the water flow before it reaches Tulare Lake, concerted efforts are underway. The ongoing flooding poses a significant threat to agricultural areas, leading to the implementation of measures to temporarily divert floodwaters over agricultural land. This approach aims to replenish crucial groundwater resources essential for drought resilience. Utilizing reservoirs has become a primary method to capture and store water, some of which is directed for irrigation in farms and orchards. Additionally, channeling water to percolate into the ground helps replenish depleted groundwater caused by drought and excessive pumping, while some water naturally evaporates. Notably, tens of thousands of acre-feet of water from the Kern River are being diverted through a canal to the California Aqueduct, providing much-needed water supplies to cities along Los Angeles. But can this diversion be the ultimate solution, or is it just a temporary band-aid to a much larger problem? While these measures offer some relief, they are not a long-term fix. They do, however, assist in combating the issues arising from groundwater depletion and excessive pumping in the valley, which leads to soil compaction. In response to the ongoing threat of summer flooding, communities are taking advantage of the respite between destructive winter storms and impending spring melting to assess and reinforce their defenses. The California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection's Incident Command Team is capitalizing on dry weather to undertake necessary measures. Critical roadways between Allensworth and Opa, regions already affected by severe flooding, are being raised and residents are being provided with more secure evacuation routes if needed. Emergency responders are actively bolstering levees and deploying portable muscle wall barriers to better manage future water flows. Recent weeks have witnessed farmers and emergency workers collaborating to strengthen levees and minimize the impact of saturated soil and swelling rivers due to relentless atmospheric river storms hammering California. While sandbags and super sacks have been employed for mitigation, their efficacy in potentially reducing water levels is uncertain, especially considering the numerous breaches in the levees, necessitating rescue operations. The situation remains dynamic and challenging, demanding ongoing cooperation and preparedness. The unpredictability of weather patterns continues to strain communities, highlighting the need for adaptive strategies to address persistent flooding. As Californians grapple with the consequences of the re-emergence of Tulare Lake, they are united in their determination to navigate these trials and protect their livelihoods and cherished landscape. However, the impact of the flooding goes beyond livestock and farmlands as it's also disrupted construction sites, including one high-speed rail project and affected multiple communities, exposing significant dam-related issues in the state. Balancing the need for infrastructure development with the preservation of natural landscapes becomes a pressing concern. According to a researcher deeply rooted in the situation, the ongoing flooding is unfolding as a gradual natural disaster, and the existing infrastructure is inadequate to handle the scale of the crisis, presenting a major mitigation challenge. However, California officials are prepared for a prolonged battle against the floods, with nearly 700 individuals battle-ready to assist Tulare County's emergency response efforts. But despite the efforts, it's evident that traditional methods like sandbags and super sacks can only offer limited relief. Recognizing this, the director of the California Department of Water Resources points out that the current water volume in the Sierra exceeds the capacity of existing facilities. And despite their commitment to mitigate damages, the overwhelming water volume poses a difficult risk to navigate. Once the water reaches the historic lake bed, the options for its removal are limited, and as a result, 
The primary approaches may involve a heavy reliance on evaporation, canal diversion, and pumping. But given the expensive nature of the mitigation efforts, the impacted residents, mainly low-income communities, have limited options to address the situation. Many residents already face challenges in stocking up on food and living paycheck to paycheck. This highlights the severity of the situation. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about the drastic rise in Tular Lake's volume? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.